Hi there! Since my last video I've received quite a few comments and suggestions as to why this little hoglet engine might be not be running as well as it should do. And I also put a question on the Home Model Engine Machinists Forum um, with regards to the carburetor size because I was concerned that the carburetor wasn't the right match. However, the, their general consensus was that the carburetor should be okay. Um, but they also uh, came up with some other suggestions so I've ended up with quite a long list of things that I need to check and uh, maybe make some adjustments on. So uh, in this video I'll uh, go, go through that list and we'll try and get this uh, little engine running properly. So this is the OS21 carburetor that I used in the previous video. And like you can see, I mean it's, it's supposed to be brand new. Sold to me as new, but it's second hand. Uh, I'm just guessing that the... Um, the jet might be new. Uh, but anyway, um, that's the manifold I made and the bore in it was qu quite large uh, and it prevented me from, from uh, putting in the uh, recommended o-rings because they would have actually gone through. Um, so what I've decided to do is to buy a new carburetor. Uh, similar specification to that one and this is a CEN 45 sorry CEN SP 45-10 so I think it's around about six millimeter Venturi and uh, if this works then people who are making this model in the UK and if they're struggling for carburation then they should be able to get hold of one one of these uh, from you know a decent supplier brand new what I also did was I uh, made the manifold again and uh, put a smaller bore in it which enabled me to put the recommended BS010 uh, o-rings on it. So uh, fingers crossed uh, carburation will be okay and the advantage with this one is you're going to adjust the needle quite easily because the adjustments at the front on this one the needle was at the bottom quite difficult to uh, to control really. Now when I uh, originally posted the question on the Model Engine Machinist Forum, Mike Remus who produced this drawing very kindly posted this on the forum and it's an explanation of the relationship between a piston, a cylinder and an o-ring and it uh, tells you how to work out the dimensions of the, for example, the groove depth and the groove width and the size of the piston you should be using. But I won't go through all of that, but I'll uh, show you what I came up with and comparing it with what my actual engine. Um, so the article suggests that the groove width should be 80 thou. Now my groove, groove width is 78 thou, so we're pretty close on that one. And the groove depth should be 75 thou. Now I'm 80 thou, which is, again, it's pretty close. It also suggests that the piston is two thou less than the cylinder ID and my cylinder is uh, 1.004 and my cylinder is 1.002 so that's all, all good and my o-ring is uh, an outside diameter of 1.004 um, so based upon the information that uh, um, Mike sent through um, I think the piston, the cylinder and the o-ring are all good and uh, I get good compression anyway so I'm happy with that. Now in my last video I asked the question about lubrication of the little ends and we suggested using something called um, Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabiliser. Um, you add it to oil uh, but uh, Wiz has used it neat uh, for some of his uh, components and uh, apparently it's a little bit like treacle but it hangs on in there forever you know um, so I, I ordered some of that about a week ago but I think it's got lost in the post and that's why this video is a bit delayed so I'm proceeding without using that um, so I've put plenty of oil on the little ends and, and reassembled it now another suggestion was to uh, change the uh, clearance on the tappets uh, I've got them set to about 10 thou I think or 8 thou and um, some suggested you know really uh, sort of fine adjustment so 
I've set the tappet clearance to be uh, between one and a half and two thou um, on all the valves. And uh, what I what I need to do now is to double check um, that the valve timing is still right. So I was looking at um, some information. I think on the um, Jerry Howell uh, V twin engine, which is hopefully I'm going to have a go at making that next, and. The suggestion there was that the intake valve should open spot on, top dead centre. So I've put this gauge on the intake valve and if I turn the flywheel, oh, it's just started to open there. So as you can see there, it's just come up to top dead centre on the left cylinder. I'll double check the right one in the same way, um, but I mean really it's, it's got to be right otherwise my, uh, if it isn't, my geometry of the uh, cams uh, gone awry. So in terms of the valve timing, uh, these are the um, sort of suggested um, settings for the Jury Howell V-Twin, so I'm just checking that um, this hoglet is, is similar. So I've just seen that the in intake opens at top dead centre. Uh, it closes round about 40 degrees after bottom dead centre and the exhaust does open round about 50 degrees before bottom dead centre and it closes round about 5 degrees after top dead centre and I've checked both cylinders and both are sort of right, roughly around um, those parameters so I'm happy that valve timing is pretty, pretty good now some have suggested that in terms of ignition timing uh, my 30 degree before top dead centre is a bit too early. Um, so I've uh, changed it to um, round about 20 degrees before top dead centre. So we'll give that a try. Now in terms of the other things to check, I've already addressed the uh, new manifold. And um, for the fuel, I think rather than using Coleman fuel, I think I'm gonna um, make up some two stroke uh, using petrol. Uh, so that'll be unleaded petrol. Uh, so I'm going to use a ratio of 40 to 1. And uh, I've checked that the breather hole in the fuel tank is okay and that's adequate. And um, someone suggested checking that the fuel level isn't higher than the jet. So what I've, I've done is I've uh, reduced the height of the uh, fuel tank by about a quarter of an inch. Well a while back Olivier in France, he made me a fantastic plaque for this little engine but it was a bit on the big side uh, but he's ever so kindly made me another one that looks absolutely perfect
Well, that was good fun, and uh, I must say I'm really chuffed with uh, the way this little engine runs. I think there's a little bit more tweaking needed here and there. Uh, I maybe need to uh, maybe explore different fuel types and uh, look at the richness setting on the carburetor. Um, but uh, all in all, I'm really happy with the result, and uh, I really must thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided to uh, help me get this little engine going. And uh, also many thanks to Olivier in France for sending me a new plaque. I think that uh, sets the engine off very nicely. And uh, I think my next big project is going to be a Jerry Howell V-Twin, uh, which is uh, quite a more complicated project. Um, it's got, uh, the little engine's got quite a few um, uh, gears in there and uh, ball bearing sets and stuff like that. Uh, so it should be quite a challenge. Uh, but anyway, um, in the meantime, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you later.